I was watching Pentatonix yesterday. Oh. <sighs> what up, everybody? This is Kamea. And this is Ali. And this is episode five of Brothers, Business, Business and, and Barbells. Bar Didn't even make a mistake. First of all, we just wanted to say thank you for the support. We actually surpassed our goal of 10 subscribers. I think we're in the 20s now. Yes. How does that feel? Well, it, it feels good, but at the same time, um, we haven't been able to get any of our immediate family members to watch any of our videos. None. And we don't know if it's because we don't give them the proper respect that they deserve. And it's not that we disrespect them, it's just I think we need to do a little bit more to engage them. It's taken a lot more to get them to do something that we asked than we anticipated. Which is kind of a weird thing because you'd think they'd be the easiest to get on board, but I guess what we're learning is that they just need to be sold a little bit harder than everyone else. Yeah, it's hard to convince family. And I don't know if you guys experience the same thing, but it's hard to convince family you know, to do certain things. And we thought that our realm of influence was expanded, you know, pretty, pretty good with our family, but... You know what it is? I blame multi-level marketing and Ponzi schemes because pyramids, pyramids. you have ruined relationships That's within right. families because everyone thinks, everyone's trying to push something on you, and so nobody trusts nobody <laughs> we, anymore. And you know what? <laughs> if we had something to sell, we'd probably sell it, but we don't have anything to sell. That's right. Yes. So speaking of pushing other products, um, we're going to promote other people's businesses that only means. because they never asked us to. That's right. And That's so. Right. First one is uh, if you in the Carolinas, and I don't know if it's North or South Carolina, no, but North Carolina. North Carolina, Willis Drawn Jr. and Master Cuts. You know, check this out. Like, we'll this put is a, link, a problem. A link right here. This is a problem. And for us, dude, there is nothing better than getting an amazing haircut. This makes you feel like a new man, like you can handle all the challenges that are about to come to you that week. And for a man, it's just everything. So if you got a great place to cut your hair, like Master Cuts, it's going to change your life at one for that point, week. At one point, we're going to go to Master Cuts and we're going to get a haircut. That's right. right. Now, That's right. Uh, we haven't accumulated enough points to get there. <laughs> so when we do, we're definitely going to And we're going to visit there. all the relatives. You know, we're going to visit the uh, Bailajis. We're going to visit the Tuipulotus. We're going to visit, who else we got over there? The Tongas. The Tongas we're going to visit yeah. the, uh, just all of our Carolina family. We love you. Shout out to you. And we see you. We see you, Lady Tapa. We know you busting we skulls see, in the we ring. See, we see we know you what Barbarian you up to. Uh. Barbarian Jr. So the first thing we wanted to talk about was uh, a little bit of business. The thing that we wanted to address today was being a big, being big in business. <laughs> now, <laughs> we're not saying that we're big, like we're doing big business, but we do find that there's some. Uh, some challenges, some hurdles, whatever you want to call it, to being a big guy and doing business because there's some assumptions that come along with it. So imagine us just being friendly to you in the parking lot and just saying, hey, how's it going? Immediately, people look at us like... Instinct. They think that we're going to eat them or something. <laughs> it's not uh, something that always happens, but we do notice that smaller guys that are friendly, they're just, you know, they're just less intimidating physically intimidating and it's not that we're physically you know overwhelming it's we're just not more, that big it's just more people just look at us and we're like shrek big and so what we find is when we're doing business uh there's just a little bit of a hurdle to get over are you going to are you going to assume a little bit that we're physically violent that we're physically going to try to overpower you or bully you if we were That's right. in a relationship with you. And this is the other thing that we figured out when we were talking about this is maybe it's not that they think we're intimidating. Maybe it's because we're big. They, they correlate that with being dumb. Okay. So when I started uh, doing dentistry, uh, this was a problem for people because when they saw it, I mean, can you imagine these things in your mouth? And it was a little bit of a hurdle, but the truth is it doesn't actually cause me any trouble or the patient because the tools are small and in fact it helps me when I'm pulling out teeth but you kind of get the idea as a bigger guy there are certain hurdles you got to overcome as far as assumptions go 
if you had to be defended by somebody, are you going to pick Joe Pesci or are you going to pick my brother? And just if you were just to look at them, you might go, eh, we'll go with the bigger guy. And so there's some good and bad that comes along with being bigger. Joe Pesci? Yeah. You never watched? Anyway, I like Joe Pesci. So the second thing that we wanted to talk about was with family and, and just having conversations with family. What's really interesting about the family dynamic is the amount of irrationality that goes on. So in other words, everybody in the family is making irrational decisions. And one of the great things that we came to realize is to just let people be irrational because so are we. Like there's a lot of things that we do that people don't understand. Like most of our family doesn't even know why we're doing this YouTube show. And it's funny to them. Sometimes we don't even know why we're doing it. <laughs> Allowing people the space to just be irrational. And here's why. You don't know what they're measuring. You mm -hmm. don't know what makes them happy. You don't know what their goals are. And if you took the time to find out, you might begin to understand why they seem so irrational. But if everyone's irrational, that means everyone's rational. Oof. You know, it just consumes too much time and energy. And I think over time we just decided, hey, just you got to let people do, do what the they want to do and, yeah. and just be happy that they're even doing it. And so if somebody's making a decision to, you know, buy a big house or live a certain place or, or go on a huge vacation or whatever, like it might be irrational to you based on what your knowledge is of their circumstance. But to them, hey, just they can justify it all day. We think that it's something that we should embrace as opposed to just fight against and try to understand because you'll never understand the full context of somebody else's life. And that's how we feel about families, you know. We're sometimes just tourists in your life and we got nothing but admiration and respect for why you're doing what you're doing. Doesn't mean we want to do the same thing, but respect. Yeah, and we should feel that same way about this video and our family not watching it like we referred to at the beginning. Like whatever reason we feel it's irrational that they're not watching the video but at least for some reason unknown to us they didn't want to watch it so hey well another, another point on that is like sticking with the tourism analogy you still have to be worth visiting mm -hmm. right like you yeah. can't just be a bad place to visit with nothing interesting no good food no good you know sights right. to see and so that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to be you know somewhat interesting to our family and hopefully they'll want to tour around in our life and hey maybe even become a deeper part of it or not so right, the, last thing. the last thing we want to talk about was working out and one thing that's really become a profound thing to us is having a workout partner now for those who work out alone we got mad respect for you because we just couldn't do it like i i, I tried to go to the gym by myself and I was just not even trying that hard. I just walk around, you know, like one of those lonely kids, kind of like kicking my shoes like on the floor. Kid. It's just not fun. It's just not, it doesn't push you. And so one of the keys, one of the secrets to us even sticking with it, even as long as we have, which isn't that long, is doing it together. Yeah, and, and also finding somebody that is um, comparable in strength and goals. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to to work out with somebody who doesn't lift as much as you or isn't trying to lift as much as you because you're always taking all the plates off and adding so much more. It's hard to focus when... when it's hard somebody. enough putting yeah. away the, the weights of people who don't put them away themselves. Oh, I'm right. so upset with that, man. Like, it's extra benefit to us when people don't put their weights away. Because mm. then we can work extra hard to put their stuff away. Yeah, so that's, that works for us. Get you a partner. Try to find somebody who's got like similar goals as you, someone mm -hmm. who's got similar strength. Then you can play off the competitiveness to take you to the next level. Right. It's a brilliant strategy. It works every time. Yeah, we definitely wouldn't be pushing ourselves to where we're at right now if we weren't similar in strength and always wanting to, you know, add just a little bit more weight. So it's it's been great for us. We're lucky that, you know, as brothers, you know, obviously we're similar size, similar strength, but. Um, you know, if, if you can find a workout partner that has those things, hey, do man, it. do it, do it. It's the only way that we've found that's going to motivate us to, to get to the next level. So hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Leave us a comment. Yep. Share with your friends. Subscribe. We've uh, we've gone non-private with our IG accounts. Uh, <laughs> 
I don't even know if that matters what, or not. What, I don't even it, Nobody cares. And we always operate from that perspective, right? We aren't here to assume that someone actually cares what we're doing. Yeah. But for the few people that do, we love you. We love you. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you very much for, you know, taking a little bit of time out of your day just to we see how it. we're doing. So thank you very much. Man, you just watched episode five of Brothers, Brothers Business, Business and Barbells. Barbells. Your money on that sweet love girl the kind of put them honey on the dim sum girl so you can keep it coming i put on my slipper so we can keep it running